Hi there. Copying and pasting can go far beyond creating an identical version of the source data. We can use copying and pasting to switch between the source table and multiple charts. I'm Nabil Murad. In our worksheet, we have the gross profit for each product category for each year. I would like to create a separate column chart for each year and be able to switch charts or even see the source table by selecting a different option from a drop list. In this project, we'll create a column chart for one year. Format the different chart elements. Copy and modify the chart for other years. We'll name the cells underneath each chart. We'll create a drop list for the different years. Along the way, we'll create a lookup table for the names. We'll be then creating a defined name using VLOOKUP function, INDIRECT function. We'll then use copy and paste special for creating our switching functionality. To dynamically change charts for the different years, we'll use the defined name as a reference. Finally, we'll test switching charts by using our drop list. We have a lot to learn. So let's see how we build our project from ground up in Excel. In this worksheet, I have the gross profit for each category for each year. So I do have like six categories and then the gross profit generated for the year 2007, for the year 2008 and 2009. What I would like to do is to represent the profit for each year with a column chart. And because only the source data is going to shift for one column, so I'll be creating the first column chart and then copy it and then modify it. Let's see how we do that. I'll be selecting the data for the first chart and then I'll use the shortcut Alt F1 to create my basic column chart. And here is my column chart. I'm going to do some modifications before positioning it in its final position. So the first thing I would like to do, I don't need the value axis, so I select it and then hit delete. And then I need to get rid of the horizontal grid lines, so I select them and then hit delete. I then need to reduce the gap between the different columns, so I select them and hit Control 1, the shortcut for opening the Format Data Series dialog box, and I'm going to drag the slider a little bit to the left. I can drag it even more until I'm happy with the positioning, and then I'm going to add an effect to this series to make them look like beveled or 3D, and to do that, I go to the Format tab, select the Shape Effect, and then Bevel, and then select this effect. Finally, I would like to add, like the data labels, the numbers coming from the source table. And to do this, I click on the plus sign, and then select Data Labels, and position the data labels. Should you wish to improve the appearance of the data labels, click on one of them. You would have selected all of them. And then when you go to the Home tab, you can bump it up to 10, and you can bold it. We can also add an outline to our chart, so I'm selecting the chart, I go to the Format tab, and then click on Shape Outline, select the dark blue color, click on Shape Outline one more time, and let's change the thickness to 1.4. Now all what remains right now is to add a nice title, so I'll be selecting the chart title, and then I'll type. So I typed Gross Profit Per Category for 2007. I could go and format this by selecting it, and then I go to the Home tab, let's say I want to bold it and I want to make it dark blue. I'm going also to format the x-axis, I'll make it bold, and then I'm done with the first chart, I just want to resize it and position it. So I'll be dragging my first chart, I'll drag it down, and then I want to position it, let me zoom out a little bit so as to see more of my worksheet, so I'm going to zoom out. I want to position it in this range and I'll drag it a little bit up and to the left and now I need to align it and I want it to snap to the cell so I press the ALT key while dragging and it snaps to the lower corner of the selected cell. Now I finish with the first chart I want to create two more and instead of recreating them I press the control key 
and drag the chart to create another version of the chart and then I'm going to do the same exact thing one more time I select the chart and drag it down and I'm creating another copy and instead of recreating them I'm just going to modify the two copies that I created so let's say for the second copy when I click on it I go to the source data I want to move it from 2007 to 2008 and I would like to change the color of the chart and apply the bevel one more time I'll make this one red in color so I select the shape fill on the format tab and make it red I'm also on the format tab I want to apply a shape effect I want to make it bevel exactly as I did before I click on the chart element button in the upper right corner and I would like to add some data labels let's format the data labels as we did before so I select them click on the home tab and then bump them up to 10 and make them bold and I guess what remains here is to change the 2007 and make it just 2008 and I would have finished my second chart. Let's go to the last one which represents the gross profit per category for 2009. I need to modify this one as well so I'm selecting the source data and drag it to 2009. When I do that I need to reformat this chart. I'll select the columns go to the format tab of the ribbon and on the format tab I'll be changing the shape fill I'll make it green and then I want to make it bevels by clicking on shape effect hover over bevel and then click on the bevel effect let's add the data labels by clicking on the chart element buttons in the upper right corner of my chart and when I give it a click I check the box for data labels as we did before I'm going to select the data labels and format them on the home tab so when you go to the the home tab you can bump it up to 10 and bold it and we would have finished customizing our third chart all what remains is to change the title and I'll make it 2009 now that I finished creating the three charts the next step will be naming them my intention is to create a drop list in the blue cell and in this drop list I want to be able to select one of four things one of four options so when I select the first option I can see the table when I select the second one I see the profit for 2007 and so on and so on so my next step will be naming the ranges where these elements exist so I would like to name the range under this table so I start by selecting the cell above the table and then move down and then I want to extend my selection while pressing shift so I press shift and use my down arrow and then use my right arrow and then I would like to name this range let's say I'll name it table so I'm typing in the name box I type table and then I hit enter and I would have named the first range I'll go and name the second range under the first chart so I select the cell above move down and then I press shift and then move down to select all the cells underneath my chart and then uh, while pressing shift I hit my right arrow and then I'm selecting all the cells I'll go to the name box and let me name this one profit 2007 and then I'll do the same for the next chart but this one will be profit 2008 I'm selecting the cells below it and I'm moving to the right and then I go to the name box and name it profit 2008 and then I hit enter and then for the last one I'll select the cell above move down and then press my shift key to select all the cells press the down arrow followed by the right arrow and then I go to the name box and name it profit 2009 my next step will be creating the drop list I want to create a drop list with the names that I just assigned but these names are not really user friendly because they do not contain any spaces as you have seen so if I go to my name box look at the names that I just created they are a little bit difficult to read because they do not contain any spaces and I meant to create them that way so instead of using these non-friendly names I'll be using another set of names which is more user friendly I'll be using this set of names for creating my drop list let me copy them I'm going to copy them and position them here in cell H1 and then I want to create my drop list so to create a drop list I select cell F1 I go to the data tab of the ribbon and click on data validation alternatively you can use the shortcut alt DL tab L tab 
and then with my blinking cursor in the source box I'll be selecting my four options and then I hit OK and I would have created my drop list. So let's say I select Profit 2007. But in fact, in order to be able to create a chart and switch this chart simply by using a different option from the drop list, I need to replace these user-friendly names by the original names used in naming the cells behind each one of the charts. So in order to do that, I want to use the user-friendly version of the name and be able to return the other version of the name, which is the one used in naming the ranges behind the charts. And to do that, I need to create a VLOOKUP function. So let me create a table array. And in this table array, in column I, I want to show the real names available in my drop list. And these names are available here below. So let's say I want to select these names that I used for naming the ranges. And then I'm going to paste them in column I starting from I1. And then I'll be creating my VLOOKUP function. Let me show you how this VLOOKUP function works and then we'll be using this VLOOKUP function in defining a name range equal VLOOKUP and when I hit tab the screen tip of the VLOOKUP function pops up and it asks me what are you looking for what's your lookup value well I'm looking for whatever comes from the drop list and then I hit come where do you look for it? Where is your table array? My table array will be these two columns, the two columns including the user-friendly version and the original version of the name. And then I hit comma. I want to return a value from the second column, so my column index number will be 2, and then comma. And finally, are you looking for an exact match or an approximate match? Yes, I'm looking for an exact match, so I'll be selecting false. Or alternatively, you can type zero, then close the bracket and then hit enter. Look at this. When I select the user-friendly version from the drop list, profit for 2007, then it's returning the name of the cells behind the chart. If I change from the drop list and select a different name, let it be source table, it's returning the name of this range behind the table. And I'm going to use this concept in creating a defined name. So let's create a defined name using the VLOOKUP function. To create a defined name, I go to the Formulas tab of the ribbon and click on Define Name. In the Defined Name dialog box or in the New Name dialog box, let's call this one Switching. And then for the function, equal VLOOKUP. In this dialog box, we have to type the entire function and we do not get the help of the IntelliSense list. I'm looking for whatever comes from cell F1. Note that it precedes the sheet name before the cell reference and that's fine. Then I hit comma. Then I want the table array range which includes the first four cells in columns H and I. And then I hit comma. I need a return value. The column index number is 2. The same exact function that I just created. And then we need an exact match so I type comma zero and then I close the bracket for the VLOOKUP function. This VLOOKUP function is using a user-friendly version of the name coming from the drop list to return a named range and Excel wouldn't recognize what is returned by the VLOOKUP function as a named range so I need to guide Excel to recognize it by saying you know what this is a named range this is indirectly a named range. So I want to put all this function into another function that tells Excel what is returned is just a name. This function is called the indirect function. So I click before the VLOOKUP function and type indirect and then open bracket and then go to the very end and close the bracket for the indirect function and I would have created my named range or my defined name switching and then hit OK. I don't need this VLOOKUP function so I'll delete it and now let me show you what we are going to do. In order to be able to switch by using this drop list I'll start by copying my source table. I'll copy it I can go to the Home tab and click on Copy. I can right-click and copy. I can use the shortcut Control c 
whatever technique you use but we want to paste special I want to paste as a linked picture so if I click on the down arrow for paste if I go to the lower right corner that will be the linked picture so if I click on that I would have pasted a linked picture if you look at the ribbon you will see the picture tools format tab denoting that this is a picture like any picture but it's not a regular picture it's a linked picture so if you make a change in the source let's say I want to change the value for 2007 and I'll make it let's say 2500 now it will be reflected on the destination it will be reflected on the linked picture I'm going to undo this step because I'm happy with what I created so far and when I select the linked picture if I look at the formula bar look at that what does it say it say it looks at the range from A5 to D11. What if I select this range from the formula bar and instead of having this static range, what if I replace it by the defined name that we created a while ago, switching? And when I select switching and then hit enter, now let's test our drop list. If I go to the drop list and change from source table to profit for 2007, that's magical. If I select profit for 2008, I'm able to switch the chart from one year to the other. This little chart and this drop list are now ready to be moved to our dashboard. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe and see you in our next tutorial.